I'm Anna Ezekiel and I'm going to talk about Carolina von Gunderoda. Gunderoda was a German writer who lived from 1780 to 1806. She had a short and tragic life. She killed herself at the age of 26. And this has contributed to her being remembered mainly for her biography. She's often seen as a tragic, mystical and romantic figure. And that life has inspired a lot of art and literature. There are many paintings, pieces of music, poems, uh, a novel, a play about her. Her writing was also an influence on modern German writers, including Anna Sayers, Johannes Bobrovsky, and Christa Wolf. Wolf actually edited a partial edition of Gunderoda's works in 1979, which is the same year that she published a novel based on an imagined meeting between Gunderoda and Heinrich von Kleist called Kle uh, Keinort Nirgens, which is available in English translation as No Place on Earth. Gunderoda was a powerful and beautiful writer, but her work is also philosophically interesting. She was herself very interested in philosophy, and she studied what she could. It wasn't always easy for her to get hold of texts, because although she came from a, a noble family, she didn't have much money. So she had to rely on wealthier and better connected connections to get her uh, texts. But still, she read uh, Kant, at least in a popularised form for, by Kiesewetter, also Fichte, a lot of Schelling, Herder, Hemsterhuis, Schleiermacher, and the early German romantics Novalis and Friedrich Schlegel. She was also very interested in mythology and systems of thought from throughout the world. Um, she was interested in Scandinavian and Celtic mythology, also in Middle Eastern, Indian, uh, Chinese and Egyptian mythology, and um, sources for these were starting to be translated into German around the time that she was writing. Um, she was also interested in, in ancient Greek and Roman mythology, and she read Greek and Latin. Um, so Gunderoda was very influenced by early German Romanticism, although she doesn't take up anything uncritically from them. Um, one of the main differences from the Romanticism of um, Novalis and Schlegel is that Gunderoda does not have a kind of dualism, especially a gender dualism, underlying um, her, her thought. Uh, for her, gender is largely irrelevant to anything outside gender, whereas for the early German romantics, um, gender was a fundamental dichotomy that, that also characterised other things about the world. Um, so in many ways, I see her as being um, a bridging figure between early German romanticism and Heidelberg romanticism, uh, which was the romanticism of the brothers Grimm that flourished between around 1806 and 1810, and Gunderoda was very close friends with three of the major figures from Heidelberg Romanticism and influenced all of them. Um, so these were Bettina Brentano von Arnim, who became a famous writer, Bettina's brother Clemens, uh, Clemens Brentano, who was a famous writer, and Georg Friedrich Kreutzer, a, a philologist and mythologist whose work was very influential throughout the 19th century and uh, with whom Gunderoda had an affair. And, uh, Kreutzer was married, so it was his letter ending their affair that triggered her suicide. Gunder Roda uh, didn't generally write philosophical essays, although she does have a few unfinished pieces, uh, short pieces like that, in her, in her Nachlass. But um, she wrote mainly plays, poetry, short stories and dialogues. Of those, she published three collections. Two were published during her life, um, Poems and Fantasies in 1804 and Poetic Fragments in 1805. Uh, that one I've translated into English, so it's easy to get in English. Um, and then a third one, Meleta, had been sent to the publisher when she died, but the publication was cancelled upon her death. She also published three plays and a short story separately in journals, and these um, are some of her longest pieces and um, also philosophically interesting. In addition to responding to the work of the Romantics and Schelling, uh, Gundred was also very interested in um, the work of Kant and Fichte and her own philosophical ideas were developed against and in dialogue with um, those philosophers. So the most basic aspect of Gunderoda's philosophical position is a metaphysics in which the world and everything in it is made up of indestructible elements which come together 
into groups to form individual entities, um, every object in the world, including human beings. So Gundaroda is made up of these elements. And when we die, or when objects are destroyed, those elements are scattered, and then they can be recombined to form new elements. Um, and there are many interesting implications from this that Gundaroda draws. Um, so one of these is um, relating to the laws by which these elements combine into entities. They're attracted to each other um, on some kind of chemical or physical level. And when we are experiencing feelings of attraction to other people, um, or presumably also to things, this is a sign that some of the elements inside us are attracted to elements inside those other um, beings. Um, and that's how Gundaroda explains the experiences of love and friendship and other forms of attraction. That aspect is not unique to Gundaroda. It's um, in Goethe's novel, Elective Affinities. It's sort of the underlying principle of that novel as well. Um, so more interesting is the direction that Gundaroda takes this when she thinks about issues around death and consciousness, because she explicitly says that this dissolution and reconstitution of ourselves as elements is a form of reincarnation that is similar to the Indian idea of reincarnation. But Gundaroda's is a pretty strange model of, of reincarnation because it's not that as an individual being or consciousness we die and then appear again as another being. When we die, we're divided up and when we form other beings, it's conjointly with parts from, from other beings. So we're having this mingling um, and separating of our uh, of our self with others. So some of Gundaroda's work is an attempt to imagine and communicate what it would be like to experience these forms of existence that go beyond human consciousness, but also beyond the kind of unity um, and identity that we normally think of as being essential to not just consciousness, but to awareness and to being and so on. Um, in addition to thinking that through on that kind of level, this also feeds into Gundaroda's idea about what it is to be a self throughout the course of an individual's life. And Gundaroda was very struck by Kant's claim that we can't know the thing in itself and the extending of this thing, uh, of this claim to um, our ability to cognize ourselves as subjects. Um, so for Kant, being a subject is more of a regulative principle. Um, we can't know any sort of subject that's a substratum underlying our experiences. Um, and Gundaroda claims in her letters that this is indeed how she experiences herself and how she perceives other people. She says that her own experiences, her thoughts and feelings are so fleeting that they don't cohere into a self. So the solution to this, because we, we do have selves, is for Gundaroda other people. So although our own ways of perceiving ourselves are um, very, very changeable from one moment to the next. The way that we perceive other people and the way that other people perceive us is more stable. Um, it also changes and should change to reflect longer term changes in our personalities um, and the way that we are. Um, but for Gundaroda, it's that stability that others give us that allows us to be a self. And this means that for Gundaroda, social life is very, very important, and it is also very important to have friends who reflect you in a way that is not just stable, but also positive. Um, and this has to be, for Gundaroda, a balance between an, an honest and earnest assessment of your friend, um, and also your, your, it also should be positive. Otherwise, people will end up with a very negative self-image. Um, and that, that's a problem, as is having too positive a self-image for Gundaroda. Gundaroda also uses this metaphysical model of the elements combining and dissolving and recombining to underline her politics, because she sees political bodies, whether that's a state or a religious institution or any other kind of institution, as being analogous to bodies and objects in the world, that is, they're formed of individual elements, in this case, individual people. And she thinks that just like natural bodies eventually degrade and die, um, institutions, corporate bodies also 
eventually dissolve and die and then need to be reconstituted, uh, at which point they will be more vibrant and young again. So we're still at very early stages of reading Gundaroda as a philosopher. Um, this has been going on starting with Wolf's partial rehabilitation of Gundaroda um, and picking up a little bit in the 90s and then in the last sort of five to ten years. And it's very exciting to unravel her claims and, and figure out how they respond to and modify the work of other philosophers working at that time. Uh, and also to consider how she may have influenced the development of German thought at that time through her influence on people like Bettina Brentano von Arnim, Clemens Brentano, and Georg Friedrich Kreuzer, as well as other people in that circle. <laughs>